Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. Hey guys, now we're going to do this problem that says the belt passing over the pulley is subjected to forces F1 and F2. Here's F1 and here's F2. Each having a magnitude of 40 Newton meters. So let's put F is equal to F1 which is equal to F2, these are magnitudes, which is equal to 40 Newtons. I don't know why I said Newton meters, excuse me. Uh, F1 acts uh, straight down in the negative K direction and then replaces forces by an equivalent resultant force and coupled moment around point A, which is right here. Express the result in Cartesian vector form and set theta equal to zero so that F2 acts in the negative J direction. So there's something about this problem that this is something that happens in a lot of problems and this is the reason that everybody seems to be getting confused, which is that the drawing doesn't exactly depict the problem. So I'm gonna modify the drawing a little bit so you guys can see it, but this is something you have to be aware. Don't trust the drawing so much when you're trying to think through these problems, okay? So let me get my eraser and it says that theta, which is this angle right here, is zero. And as you can see in the drawing, theta is obviously not zero. It looks like 25, 30 degrees if I had to guess. So I'm going to erase this part of the drawing and I'm going to redraw it how it actually is because F2 is acting straight in the J direction, this being the Y axis. So this is what I mean. What I mean, excuse my epic drawing skills, what I mean is that the belt is actually going that way. Let's go that way. And F, this is F2, is going straight that way. And this theta is non-existent because it's zero. It's right here. And I'm going to put theta is equal to zero degrees, so you don't really see it. You shouldn't see this line right here either. Okay, so let's not get confused. And this is how the drawing would actually look like for this problem since theta equals to zero. So don't get confused and don't trust the diagrams so much. This is not only true for the book. This is true for engineering in general. When you get out there in the field, somebody might draw a sketch of a problem and it might not exactly be right because usually when you're sketching it out, you don't really know all the moving parts. So that being said, oops, current layer is hidden. Hit it by accident, sorry guys. So that being said, this is how the drawing should actually look like for this particular problem. So let's get to it. Like I said, the magnitude of F is equal to the magnitude of F1, which is equal to the magnitude of F2, which is 40 Newtons. So let's draw the Cartesian vector form of each of these ones, which F1 is zero on the I plus zero on the J minus 40 in the K, and this is in Newtons, because it's going straight down in the K direction. F2 is zero on the I minus 40 in the J plus zero on the K, also in Newtons, because it's going straight in the negative Y direction, which is negative J. So the sum of the forces, which is the resultant force, equivalent resultant force is minus 40 J minus 40 K. So that's the resultant force. Now, let's talk about the resultant moment about point A, which is equal to R1 cross F1 plus R2 cross F2. What is R1 and what is R2? So for F1, it's coming out of the pulley right here. So R1 is right there. And R2 It's right there because it's coming out of the pulley. And we do know this radius. So we have to basically figure out what is R1 and what is R2, knowing the radius and the distance to the pulley. So 
Let's do R1 first. R1 is equal to minus 0.3 in the eye. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice that I converted the 300 millimeters already into meters. You know that 300 millimeters is equal to 0.3 meters. Same thing for 80. Now, this is a common mistake that I see. Is 0.08 meters is equal to 80 millimeters? Don't put 0.8. That's a big mistake that I see all the time. Now, uh, as I was saying, R1 is negative 0.3 meters in the eye. Plus 0.08 in the J. Plus 0 in the K. R2 is equal to minus 0.3 in the eye plus 0 on the J, plus 0.08 in the K. So now that we have our 1 and our 2 and the forces, we can basically do our matrices. And I already see that I'm going to run out of space, and I'm trying to be tidy here, so let me start a new page. M1 is equal to R1 cross F1, I, J, K. R1 is minus 0 0.3, 0 0.08, and 0, 0, 0, and minus 40. And we love zeros in our matrices. It makes them so much easier. Minus 0 0.3, 0 0.08, 0, 0. Let me put the equals right here. And we're going to do our positive diagonals first. So this times that times that is uh, minus 3.2i j times 0 times 0 0 and k times minus 0 0.3 times 0 0 so it's nothing negative diagonals 0 times 0 0.8 times k is 0 0 times 0 times i is 0 minus 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 times minus 40 times minus 0.3 so that's three negatives which make up a negative that would be minus 12 in the j so that is the moment being created by f1 along A. M2 is equal to R2 cross F2. I'm going to go a little faster for this one, guys, because you know how to do matrices, such as showed you an example. Minus 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0.08, 0, minus 40, and 0. I, J, minus 0.3, 0, 0, and minus 40. So positive diagonals, negative diagonals, this should look something like 12k plus 3.2 in the i. So the sum of the, okay, so hold on, m2. So sum of the moments around a is equal to m1 plus m2. So you add those two Cartesian vectors together, which are this one and this one, and that will give you minus 12 in the j plus 12 in the K, as some of the moments around A is equal to. Now let's talk about units. Remember, we converted this to meters. It's not in millimeters, so it's in meters times or cross the forces which are in Newtons. So the unit is Newton meters. Final answer for the moments. Where did I put that? Okay. Final answer for the resultant force.